our dear brothers uh, in Christ. So last week uh, we studied about the church uh, part uh, two, where we understood uh, that uh, who is the real church. If you see the faithful ones uh, who are faithful to God until the death, they are the real class of people. And we saw how to attain the heavenly salvation. If you want to go in the heavenly salvation, we just can't uh, go in this uh, fleshly body. We need a spiritual body. And uh, how to attain that spiritual body is that uh, first we need to be begotten and then born in the spirit. It is the same way as uh, a mother uh, you see, gives birth to a child. First the child is begotten, then the child is born. So similarly, he that is born of the spirit, as a spirit being, first of all, has to be begotten of the spirit. That is what happens when a person takes uh, baptism, is anointed with the Holy Spirit. So, uh, that is the time that uh, God uh, gives us the Holy Spirit, that the Holy Spirit is there in the old uh, creature and uh, it grows uh, into likeness of Christ. So, as it is growing into the likeness of Christ, we saw last time clearly that there is a quite good warfare between a new man and the old man because the old man is completely, you see, uh, in the world and uh, he's got some all the worldly habits and all. But the new creature, which is uh, begotten by the Holy Spirit in the image of Christ, that doesn't agree to do all the sinful things. So there is a warfare within ourselves with the new man and the old uh, creature. But if you want to be of the faithful class, if you want to be of the class which God is willing to take uh, them as a bride of Christ, then we need to overcome. We need to fight. So, ultimately in our death, uh, this body, we give, we given a spiritual body. That's what we read in 1 Corinthians 15.50. The flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, you see. So in this uh, uh, human body, fleshly body, we can't go. So we need a spiritual body. God will give us only after uh, remaining faithful to God. This is how Jesus also went to heaven. We say he did not go to heaven in the same fleshly body. But after his death, uh, God gave him a spiritual body. Okay, through which only he went to heaven. So dear brethren, so we saw the class of people, the called, the chosen and the faithful. So whom God is seeing, if you see, God is seeing the faithful class. Sir. So we need to come through this process called chosen and remain faithful to God. And this uh, faithful class of people, this group, God has selected even before the foundation of the world. Let us read Ephesians 1 4. Ephesians 1 4. Saiji Brother, can you read Ephesians 1 4? Uh, Saiji Brother, you're there? Okay, somebody else can uh, read Brother Steve from the yes. Ephesians, Ephesians 1 4. According as he had chosen us in him, before the foundation of the world, that we could be holy and without blame before him in love. Okay. So we should be holy without blame in love. And God has chosen us before the foundation of the world. So this uh, clearly proves that uh, this class of people have been selected even before God laid the foundation of this world. So some people think uh, that uh, this class of people is selected even before our birth. Even before we are there in mother's womb, this class of people is selected. David, then, if uh, that class of people who has to be of that uh, heavenly salvation, if they are selected even before their birth, then that clearly proves there is nothing for us to do. There is no need for us to do any good thing or bad thing, irrespective of of whether we are good or bad, just because God has already chosen us, He will definitely take us to heaven. If that is the case, then why Christ should come and die for us? Anyway, we are already selected before our birth. You see, what does the Bible say? Does the Bible say that God has selected anybody before the birth? 
You see, no. Apostle Paul clearly clarifies this for in 1 Corinthians 9 chapter where he himself tells that I keep my body under subjection so that after teaching to everybody, I may not be a castaway. Let us read 1 Corinthians 9.27. Uh, Sahaja Buddha, you are there? Okay. Uh, Emmanuel Buddha, can you read 1 Corinthians 9.27? 1 Corinthians 9.27 But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection. Lest that by any means when I have preached to others I myself should be a castaway. Very good, brother. So it clearly says I keep my body under subjection lest by any means uh, after I have preached I myself become a castaway. If Apostle Paul is selected even before he was born why should he keep his body under subjection? Why should you fear of losing the crown? Dear brethren, this clearly proves that nobody is chosen before the birth. Then why did uh, Apostle Paul say that they are chosen before the foundation of the world? Well, let us reason and read the verse again. Uh, please read Ephesians 1.4. Please read Ephesians 1.4. Uh, Abhishek, brother, you there? Yes, yes. If you see this one book. Hello? Yeah, yeah. Please, brother. Read it. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. See, God has chosen us before the foundation of the world. Some people just read and understand only the first part of the verse. But they don't read the later part, which tells that God has not chosen individuals, but it tells God has chosen us, the church class of people, before the foundation of the world, what God has uh, chosen. He has not chosen individuals, but he has chosen this class to be holy without blame and in love. These qualities, this character is chosen before the foundation of the world, not the individuals. Let us read one more verse in Romans 8.29. Romans 8.29. Uh, Stephen, brother, can you read Romans 8.29? For whom he did not foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. See, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. See, who he did foreknow, he did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. So God did not predestinate an individual, sir. God predestinated a group. And the qualification for that group is to be the image of his son. They have to be the Xerox copies of Jesus. You see, nobody is selected uh, before the birth. If they were selected before birth, then why would God re replace Judas with Paul? Imagine. imagine. Then if uh, Apostle Paul is chosen from the foundation, why did he not uh, be the apostles along with Jesus when he was there uh, in the flesh? Yeah. Dear brethren, so God has not chosen any individual. It is like somewhat, uh, you see, prefixing a qualification not prefixing individual sir. Like for example, if there is a military selection that is going on, you see, how the military selection happens, sir? You see, the individuals sir, are not uh, prefixed. You see, the individuals are not uh, fixed before, but the qualifications for the individuals are fixed. That means their height should be so and so, their weight should be so and so, their uh, eyesight should be so and so, their uh, chest, uh, their bicep, the thicep, they should be you see, within the particular range, even the qualification also, then only they can be part of that group. So whoever wants to be of that group, they can be of that group. But only one thing is that they, you see, need to have that qualification. Whoever has that qualification, they will become of that selected class. Similarly, God has chosen, you see, 
the and selected the qualification and the character but not the individuals you see even in the old testament god had selected uh, the priest high priest you see not everybody can become a priest or high priest there was a qualification you see and based on that only they were selected let us read uh, leviticus 21:17 uh emmanuel brother can you read leviticus 21:17 Leviticus 21, 17. Ah. Say to Aaron, for the generations to come, none of your descendants who has a defect may come near to offer the food of his God. See, he that is uh, having a defective organ, you see, that means uh, a handicapped person, one who is not properly, you see, huh? uh, equipped, uh, you see, he is uh, not supposed to become a high priest at all. So, the qualifications for a high priest was that his body, you see, all the, uh, what do you say, uh, hands, legs and everything in his body has to be intact, you see. And uh, he could not uh, have a additional, uh, you see, hands, uh, what do you say, additional fingers. Some people have the six fingers, okay. And some people don't have proper nose, you see, the nose will be flat, or a ear will be, you see, off. Uh, and even the right side should be clear. It should not be having the squint eyes. But, so, the high priest body, uh, each and every item of the body has to be clear. Huh? It should be perfect. So, similarly, the antitypical high priest, Jesus and his body members, they have to be complete. That means... Uh, there is no one member extra. There is no one member less. That means it is clearly fixed. The numbers are clearly fixed. Similarly, dear brethren, even the body members of Jesus, you see, are clearly fixed. You see. So, uh, what is this number? If you see, this number is one lakh and forty-four thousand. So, where is it given in the Bible? You see. Let us read Revelation fourteen one. Abhishek Buddha, please read Revelation 14.1. Okay, I will read Revelation 14.1. Mm. And I looked and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Sion, and he with him an hundred forty and four thousand having his father's name written in their foreheads. You see, 144,000, you see, whose name, uh, you see, uh, whose father's name was written on the head. Okay. Now, this is also given us uh, in a uh, book of Revelation, chapter 7, verse 4. Read, brother. Revelation 7, 4. Abhishek, brother, you can read. In Revelation 7, 4. Hmm. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all tribes of children of Israel. Very good. So one lakh and forty-four thousand, you see, they were chosen from all the tribes of Israel. So just because Israel is given, some people believe that this is brother, this is from Israel. So we have got nothing to do with it. But again, the same number is given in Revelation 14 chapter. And it says that they are selected from all over the world. Abhishek Buddha, read 14.3, Revelation 14.3. Hmm. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders and no man could learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. See, they were redeemed from the earth. It's not given that they were redeemed only from Israel. Okay, if they are redeemed from Israel, which is redeemed from the whole world, then why the name Israel is mentioned in Revelation 7 chapter? You see, 
Actually, Bible speaks about two Israel. One is a fleshly Israel, other is a spiritual Israel. Now, who is the fleshly Israel? The people who are naturally born a Jew, they are the fleshly Israel. But who are the spiritual Israel? The spiritual Israel are the people who have become the disciples of Jesus and a part of the Abraham's family by believing in Jesus. Let us read Romans 9, chapter 6 to 8. Stephen Mother, can you read Romans 9, chapter 6 to 8? Not as though the word of God has taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Ah, wait, Mother. Neither, yes. Wait. It says, all those who are Israel are not Israel. You see? Now, what is the meaning of that one? It says, just because you're born in Israel, just because you're born a Jew, doesn't mean that you become an Israel. That means to become an Israelite indeed. <laughs> to become a real Jew in the sight of God, there is a particular qualification required. Not everybody can become, you see, a Jew, a real true Israelite. Now continue with that. Huh? But they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. Neither, because they are the seed of Abraham, are they all children. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. The children of the flesh, they are not the children of God. They are not the true Israelite. But those who are of the promise, you see, they are the children of God, even as Isaac. You see, so here, Apostle Paul is telling to Romans and is speaking about who is a real Jew. Therefore, in the Bible, there is two types of Israel. Spiritual Israel, fleshly Israel. Let us read a verse about fleshly Israel. In 1 Corinthians 10, 18. Uh, Emmanuel, brother, can you read 1 Corinthians 10, 18? Behold, Israel after the flesh are not they which eat of these sacrifices, partakers of the altar. See, Israel after the flesh. Huh? This is fleshly Israel. Read about spiritual Israel, brother. Emmanuel, brother. 1 Peter 2, 5, brother. He also has... They be stones and built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. You see, a spiritual house, spiritual sacrifices. This is the spiritual Israel. Olden days, they used to offer sacrifices. We are offering ourselves. Sir. So, spiritual house, you see, has got a spiritual Israel. They are the fleshly Israel. Read who is a real Jew. Romans second chapter. Brother. 28 and 29. Imagine, brother, you can read that verse also. Romans 2nd chapter 28 and 29. For he is not a Jew, which is one out, outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision in circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter, whose praise is not men, but of God. See? Where is the circumcision? The fleshly Israel we told to circumcision in the flesh. But the real Israel, the spiritual Israel, their circumcision is in the heart. So dear brethren, this clearly proves that there are two types of Israel in the Bible. You see, and who is actually a Jew? Read Galatians 3, 3rd chapter 7 and 8. Galatians 3rd chapter 7 and 8. Emmanuel brother, please. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying in this, in thee shall all nations be blessed. See, very clearly it says, you see, huh? they that are of faith, they are the children of Abraham. So faith of Abraham is required. Then only, even the Gentiles, you see, though they are not the natural Israel, 
If they have the same faith of Abraham, they will become the Jew in the sight of God. So, when God gave the opportunity of the lakh and 44,000, first it was given to the nation of Israel. But the nation of Israel, you see, not a complete number came out from them. Hence, God, you see, rejected the Jews and God turned to the Gentiles to collect the remaining people from the Gentiles. Acts 13.46. Abhishek Budar, can you read Acts 13.46? <clears throat> Acts 13.46. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing you put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, lo, we turn to Gentiles. First it was given to the Jews. They rejected it. God turned to the Gentiles. So, the lakh and 44,000, when it tells uh, in Revelation, you see, it is speaking about the spiritual Israel. Now, how do we cross-check it? You see, see, the Bible says, uh, how do you study the Bible? Here a little, there a little. Search the scriptures. You see, there should be a scripture answer for a scriptural question. Okay. Now, we all know that Israel was composed of 12 tribes. Israel was not a single group. It had 12 tribes, uh, the 12 sons of Jacob. The 12 sons of Jacob, the 12 tribes of Israel, <laughs> the list is given in Genesis 49 chapter. And list is given in Revelation 7 chapter also. But if you observe that and study and see, you see the names given in Revelation and 49 chapter are quite different. First of all, Genesis 49 chapter, the tribe of Dan appears. But in Revelation, the tribe of Dan doesn't appear. Again, Manasseh doesn't appear in Genesis 14 chapter. But in Revelation 7 chapter, Manasseh appears. You see, again, there's a list given in numbers. Uh, <clears throat> second chapter, where uh, Daniel is mentioned, Joseph is not mentioned. But in Revelation, you see, Dan is not there. Joseph is there, you see. And uh, why this difference? Uh, this clearly proves that this is not speaking about the fleshly Israel at all. This is speaking about the spiritual Israel. Okay. And moreover, even uh, Ephraim is there in Old Testament. Levi is not there. But in the Revelation, Ephraim is not there. Levi is there. Okay. Now, let us read Revelation 7 chapter. Brother. Uh Emmanuel, brother, please read Revelation 7 chapter, verse 5. In Revelation chapter 7, verse 5. From the tribe of Judah, 12,000 were sealed. From the tribe of Reuben, 12,000. From the tribe of God, 12,000. Okay, brother. Which is the tribe that is first mentioned there, brother? Judah. Why Judah? Actually, if you see, go and study now, Genesis 14 chapter. Who is the first son of Jacob? Anybody? Any guess? You see, it was Reuben. But here, Reuben's name is not mentioned first, but Reuben mentioned second. You see, read that verse again, brother. Imagine, brother, please read that verse again. From the tribe of Judah, 12,000 were sealed. From the tribe of Reuben, 12,000. Uh, From see? the tribe of God, 12,000. Thank you, brother. So, Reuben is second. Why Judah first? You know, who came from the tribe of Judah? Jesus Christ. Very good. That is the reason he is mentioned first. Because who is the head of the church? Jesus again. Yes. Jesus again. So, he should be mentioned first. Hence, the tribe of Judah is mentioned first. Dear brethren, this clearly proves 
that Revelation 7 chapter is speaking about the spiritual Israel. Okay. Now, let us see the qualification of the 144,000. Okay. Uh, Stephen, brother, please read Revelation 14.4. Fourteen four. These are those who did not defile themselves with women, for they remained virgins. They followed the Lamb wherever he goes, and they were purchased from among mankind and offered as first fruits to God and the Lamb. You see, here also it says they were redeemed from mankind, not uh, from only from Israel, the entire world. Okay, now it says. These are they that were not defiled with women. You see, they don't have any relationship with women. Now, Revelation book, we all know, it is not a literal book. It is a symbolic book. You see, it's all only significance. Symbols are given. Lot of visions are there. We will study all those things in details in coming days. But here, it clearly says, this is not a literal, you see, thing. Because, you see, these are they who are defiled with women. Now, what is the woman in the Bible? We need to search. No. You see, woman in the Bible means church. Let us read 2 Corinthians 11.2. Uh, Abhishek, brother, can you read 2 Corinthians 11.2? <clears throat> brother Abhishek, you are there? Oh, yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, wait a minute. Mm, okay. The second Corinthians eleven two. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy. For I have espoused you to one husband, but I may present you as a chaste virgin to uh -huh. Christ. See, I have exposed you, engaged you to one husband. That's right. That means the church is now engaged to Christ. When will the marriage happen? It will happen at the second coming of Jesus. So church has to wait till the master returns. Then the marriage will happen. Then the, what will happen? The blessings will come to the world. But here in the Bible, <coughs> there is a false church also. Instead of waiting for the Lord's second coming, it already got mixed, you see, with, you see, the world. The world empires, the government of this world and began to rule. That is the false church in the Bible and that is called as the harlot. Abhishek brother, read Revelation 17.5. And upon her forehead was the name written Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and ever nation of the earth. Very good brother. See, the mother of harlots. You see, that means... Uh, she has got a daughter also. That means that this is a false church who has committed fornication by mingling with the world. Okay. Now, these are they who don't have relationship with them. That means what? They don't have any relationship with the false church. You see, we need to follow Christ. You see, the true church. And in Revelation 14.4, it also said that these are virgins. What do you mean by virgin? You see, so many people, in especially Roman Catholic, the missionaries should take it literally and think that we should be virgin. Then only Christ will marriage in heaven. Christ doesn't have any work. That he will go and marriage all the women of this world who are virgins in heaven. You see? To pollute heaven. This is not literal. See, read Revelation 1st chapter. Revelation 1.1. 1, 1. Can somebody read? Mm. Then I looked, I'm sorry, Revelation 1.1. 1, 1, eh? The revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants that must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John. Is that Revelation okay. 1, 1? Do you have a KJV Bible with you? Okay, I can. Mm. Mm. Yes, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. He signified it by his angel. 
Signified means what? Not literal. It is a sign language, symbolic language. You see, these are the symbols that are given in Revelation. We need to decode and understand each and every code, each and every symbol to understand it. So, virgins means what? Remember, Jesus spoke about the 10 virgins, parable of the 10 virgins, Matthew 25 chapter. Read Matthew 25, 1. <laughs> Matthew 25, 1. Emmanuel, brother, can you read? Matthew 25, 1. Okay, Matthew chapter 25, verse 1. At the time of kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins who took their lamp and went out to meet the bridegroom. Ah, you see, kingdom of heaven is like a ten virgins. We will study this parable in the coming week, next week. Okay? But it tells... Uh, they were uh, five were foolish, five were wise virgins. That means we need to be not mingled with the world, the false churches. So then these are virgins. And Revelation 14, 4, what does it say? It says, they follow the Lamb wherever He goes. That means what? They are the faithful followers of Jesus. What did Jesus say? Deny yourself. Carry the cross, follow me. They follow the footsteps of Jesus. They follow the teachings of Jesus. That's what it means. And it says, they were redeemed from the world. They are chosen from all over the world, not from Israel itself. You see, for the Bible, Bible is a dictionary. You see, there are doubt in Revelation 7 chapter. Revelation 14 chapter gives us a clear clarification. It also says, these are the first fruits of First fruits of what? First fruits of the Holy Spirit. The first group to go to heaven and to be with the Lord. God's Holy Spirit is developing this first class of people. Okay. Now read Revelation 14.3. Emmanuel Buddha, read Revelation 14.3. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 14, verse 3. And they sang a new song before the throne and before the four living creatures and the elders. No one could learn the song except the 144,000 who had been redeemed from the earth. You see, and they sang a new song, it seems, which nobody could sing, only the lack and 40,000. Now, what is this song which no man can sing? Even there, yeah, Raman Karasa doesn't sing. Only, you see, these people know what. Now, which is the song? Well, the Bible, Bible is a dictionary. You see, the answer is given in Bible only. Where? Revelation 15, 3. Uh, Abhishek Buddha, read Revelation 15, 3. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Emmanuel Buddha, you can read yourself. Thank you. Chapter 15, verse 3. And sang the song of God's servant Moses and of the Lamb. Great and marvelous are your deeds, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are your ways, King of you the see, nations. They sang the song of Moses and the Lamb. Now, this is the new song which nobody can sing. Now, what is the song of Moses and the Lamb? Everybody thinks this is a literal song. Moses, when he came out of Egypt, they sang the song of Jesus. Uh, you see? Now Moses' song is written in the Bible. Well, Jesus' song, where is it written in the Bible? Jesus sang the song, it's given. But where is the song written? This is not a little song. Then what is this Moses and uh, Lamb? Moses means what? Do you know? The Old Testament. Lamb means, Jesus means, the New Testament. So, those who can synchronize the Old Testament and the New Testament together, and beautifully tell the truth, the divine plan, the entire Bible, synchronizingly, beautifully understandable to others. That is the beautiful song. You see, the truth, the beautiful song of the truth, this can be proclaimed only by the 1,44,000 and nobody else. Read Hebrews 3rd chapter, verse 5 and 6. Stephen Mother, can you read Hebrews 3, 5 and 6?
Hebrews 3. Ah, yeah. 5 and 6. 5 and 6. And Moses, verily, was faithful in all his house as a servant mm. for a testimony of those things which were to be spoken after. Mm. But Christ, as a son over his own house, mm. whose house are we, mm. if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. See, same also. Moses was a servant, but Jesus was a son. So, Old Testament, all the people were servants. And when Jesus came, the adoption of son came. So, this is the Moses and the Lamb. Old Testament, New Testament. This song can be sung by the lakh and 44,000 only and none of the else can understand. Now read Revelation 14.5. Uh, Emmanuel, brother, read Revelation 14.5. <clears throat> Revelation 14.5. No lie was found in their mouths. They are blameless. Mm. You see, it says uh, that uh, in their mouth was found no guile. You see, there was no guile found in their mouth and uh, there was no fault uh, found in their mouth. It seems. You see, that means what? Uh, they don't speak lies about the Bible. You see, they don't preach the false doctrines. In their mouth is the word of God, is the truth. Dear brethren, and these are the precious in the sight of God. You see, God is the one who has created everything in this universe. There is actually nothing that is precious in his sight. But only the faithful saints, these are very, very precious in the sight of God. Because it is not easy to manufacture a saint. It has to come by experience. It has to come by obedience. And for that one, God himself alone can't do it. He needs the cooperation of the saints. Read Psalm 16, 15. Abhishek Buddha, read Psalm 16, 15. Okay, somebody else can read. 116, 15. Ah, correct. 116, 15. Correct. Precious is the sight of the Lord is the death of his sin. See, precious. You see, it's very, very precious. Because it's not so easy to prepare a saint. His death is very, very precious. Dear brethren, <coughs> this uh, lack and forty for the only people who go to heaven who are faithful to the Lord until the death. You see, apart from this one, there's another class of people who go to heaven. We'll see in the next week. But... This lakh and 44,000 other group of people who will remain faithful to God until their death. Okay. Now, is the group uh, completed? Is that lakh and 44,000 completely sealed or over? No. That is not yet complete. Now, what is the proof of that one? The proof of that one is that Israel is still not saved. Israel's eyes of understanding is still not open. That itself is a clear proof that uh, this lack and 40 is not complete and still there is a vacancy. Read Romans 11, chapter 25 and 26. Brother. Abhishek, brother, can you read? Okay. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own con seats uh, that blindness is part is happened to Israel I wanted the goodness of the Gentiles becoming and so all the Israel shall be saved as it is written they shall come out of Sion the deliverer and shall turn away gone godliness from Jacob you see the blindness in part is happened to Israel until when until the group of people are set from the Gentiles. Once this lack and part of the is completed, you see, first uh, from Israel they were selected, the balance is being selected from the Gentiles. Once this lack and part of the is selected, what will happen? Israel shall be saved. Now today we can see the world news, Israel, there is a huh? 
You see? Yeah. So, what is going to happen in Israel, that is a sign, that is a clear picture for us, that uh, we are very, very near at the door closing period. So, shortly, Israel's eyes will be opened and just will be shaved. But before that one, a lakh and 40,000 has to be completed. Even. So, this is about the faithful class. Now, what is the number? So next week, we will see about another class of people who go to heaven. Okay? So, anybody has got any doubts, any questions, they can ask. Yes, I am. Please. हमें एक बात कहता हूँ आपको प्रकाशित वाक्य में एक ऐसी भीड़ होती है जो सारे कुल भाषाओं से आती है और वो पर, परमेश्वर को दंडवत करते हैं वो गिग असंख्य अनगिनती की भीड़ या जिसे गिना से नहीं जा सकता और आप कहते हैं एक लाख चौवालीस हजार ही सब जाएंगे मैं कुछ समझ नहीं पाया देखिये English See, when I told that lakh and forty-four thousand will go to heaven, that doesn't mean that these are the only class of people who go to heaven. Okay? So, the lakh and forty-four thousand are the only class of people who will remain faithful to God until death. And these will be taken to heaven. But apart from this one, there is one more group. You see? You are telling about you are telling about you are telling about Uske bara mein, agle after mein, study karenge. Next week, we'll study about this mm -hmm. one. Okay? There's a group, other okay. called as Great Partido to go to heaven. And what is your mm -hmm. qualification? Why do they mm -hmm. drop down? We will see next week. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Any doubts? Emmanuel brother? Saiji brother? Stephen brother? Brother, continue sending the PDF, no. brother, please. Okay. Church 2, Church 2, please. Okay. Thank you. Emmanuel brother, any questions? No, brother. Raj, brother, any questions, any doubts? No, brother. Thank okay. you, brother. Thank you. So, in